I don't know if that's a single thing, but uh, perhaps just watching him and the way he fought and he worked and he uh, struggled with uh, all the issues and challenges, I think that's a great inspiration. I mean, policies, you, you, you can uh, understand and you can work out intellectually what it needs to be done. But to see him sweating away with his uh, languages, particularly Mandarin, uh, every day uh, listening to the tape, having the list, teach, teacher, then exercising, li exercising while listening to the tape playing, getting the, keeping the phrases, refreshing the phrases, uh, studying, bringing the tutor home, uh, weekends in the study, learning Mandarin, learning uh, Hokkien, especially during the 60s. Uh, it's a tremendous slog for him, and even until old age, uh, he's still taking lessons daily, still keeping the language alive, because he's made such a big effort, he doesn't want to lose that. I think that's a that's a an amazing personal example. Well, that he's given so much to the country and so singularly focused on this obsession to build up Singapore, to make it safe, to make it better, and to create something for Singaporeans which Actually, we're not entitled to expect, but which we have done, not him alone, but with his colleagues and with the population. I think that's uh, quite exceptional. Uh, from independence struggle to Malaysia, to early independence, to nation building, to managing prosperity, to transitioning and having succession and managing each of those steps while adapting as the times change. I think that's very unusual. I mean, I in cabinet uh, as the oldest member, sometimes he's the most radical. And when it came to casinos, which he was dead against for years and years, and uh, eventually we concluded that things were changing, and Giorgio made the argument in MTI then. And he, he, he took it and he pushed for it. The world has changed, we have to change. So this ability to keep current and to keep young, intellectually, mentally, I think that's very remarkable. So one day there was a report that uh, some Western tourists had been sunning themselves topless on Sentosa. I can't remember when, must be about 10, 15 years ago. So we were going to cram down on them and send them to court and jail and so on. Uh, which is one or two women. And then he, he, he sent me a note. He says, you know, even in, uh, you go to Turkey, uh, you see the beaches, the women are sunning themselves. It's quite normal. Why do we need to be so puritanical about these things? Just let it be. So I said, no, no, we're not quite that advanced yet. <laughs> we, 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 we have to enforce our rules, but of course, as times change, I think uh, expectations will shift. So his attitude was very was practical, was current, and he, he moved with the times. I remember when we did the economic committee, the first one, back in the mid-80s when there was a very severe downturn. Uh, we came to cabinet, there was a with, a report, with our report, and one of our major rep recommendations was to bring the tax rates down. At that time, the tax rates was 40%, and we were pushing it down. Our recommendation was to push it down to 25%. And there's a big discussion in Cabinet, and uh, my father was Prime Minister. He was not in favour of going that far. So in the end, I can't remember how we phrased it, but in the end, we decided, to, to, we decided that we would go I suppose we split the difference in a way. We, we said we'll go to 33, and a long term, well, we aim for 25. But it was a very hot discussion. It spanned several cabinet sessions. Uh, there were strong views because we were making a major change. Uh, 
And in the end, we had a compromise, but in fact, it was not a compromise. It was a first step. 